Hello, hello, and welcome to Women Finding Clarity. I'm your host, Pascal Cook Fernandes. I can't believe that it's the end of summer already. It's always sad to see the summer go, especially here in New England, because that means winter is right around the corner. And winter here, so long. A beautiful snow is most certainly a sight to behold, but I have to say I much prefer sunshine and lots of summer color. And along with the end of summer, always comes back to school as well. I'm not sure how you feel or how you felt about it, but I always dreaded my kids going back to school. I loved having them home with me, and I truly did miss them during the day when they were in school. That said, I also dreaded starting back up with homework, projects, early mornings. And as I say all of that, I know just how blessed we are to have a healthy family to live in a place in the world where we can enjoy the beauty of the seasons and have safe schools for our children. And heck, compared to many cases, to have school at all. I say all of this to remind you and myself to remember to look for the blessings, even when everything feels like there's not one to be found. Sometimes the blessing comes in the form of health or money. Sometimes it comes in the form of safety. Sometimes the blessing comes in the form of a lesson. Make it a practice to look for the lesson in all things. Practice when everything seems right in your world. So when you are faced with a challenge, you will automatically look for the lesson. Appreciate the lesson, whether it was an easy lesson to learn or a more difficult one. But guess what? The more you see through the lens of appreciation, the more we will find in our lives to appreciate. Your lessons are what make up your PhD in life, and what you choose to do with that PhD will determine the outcome of your future. You can choose to let your lessons harden you, make poor choices, or defeat you, or you can choose to see the blessing in the lesson and use it to make a real difference in your life or in someone else's and in someone else's. Hey there, Clarity Seekers. Pascal here. Are you a podcaster, content creator, entrepreneur, or just someone who loves sharing your voice with the world? Well, I've got something exciting to share with you. I know how important it is to have high quality audio and video for your podcasts, webinars, and even your social media content. That's why I use Riverside.fm, the best tool for recording and editing professional grade podcasts and videos right from the comfort of your own home or office. With Riverside.fm, you get crystal clear audio and video quality, easy editing tools, and the ability to pull amazing video clips for your social media. Plus, it's all in one place, which means no more juggling multiple apps or struggling with complicated setups. It's streamlined, simple, and perfect for the busy entrepreneur like us. And here's the best part. As a listener of Women Finding Clarity podcast, you can head over to riverside.fm using the link in show notes. Trust me, this is a game changer if you are looking to elevate your content and reach a wider audience. Visit Riverside using the link in show notes and start creating content that truly shines. Remember, the universe is abundant and success is your birthright. Let's align, elevate, and thrive together, one recording, one conversation at a time. Have you ever met someone who you know is making a real difference in the world? That person is almost always someone who has learned so many lessons from an experience or a life event that it can't help but change them in a positive way. This week's guest is someone who has been through it. She's learned the lessons, counted her blessings, and came out on the other side to use her life's PhD in a very positive and a very impactful way. Gloria Williams is the founder and president of Grandparents in Charge, established in 2015. 
As a mother of three grown children and a grandmother of two, Gloria started this initiative after raising her granddaughter from the age of two. Observing the lack of support for grandparents in similar situations, she dedicated herself to creating resources and a community for them. Balancing a full-time job, Gloria is also a court-appointed special advocate volunteer, guardian at litem, and an advocate for individualized education plans. Additionally, she serves as a foster and pre-adoptive family for children under the Massachusetts Department of Children and Families. As an accomplished author, Gloria has written four books designed to empower grandparents, each of which are available on Amazon. She leads a monthly support group for grandparents on meetup.com. Her leadership extends to roles such as president of the family support group for Air Force Junior ROTC and active participation in several community organizations, including Generations United and the Northern Virginia Black Chamber of Commerce, also the Western Mass Foster Care Coalition. Gloria's dedication has earned her recognition as a finalist for the 2023 Remarkable Women for Western Massachusetts. She is also a certified spin instructor with over seven years of experience. In her leisure time, Gloria enjoys traveling and spending quality time with her family. So without further ado, please help me welcome this amazing human being, this amazing soul, Gloria Williams. Gloria, welcome to Women Finding Clarity. Thank you. I'm very happy to have you here. And just a little backstory for all the listeners. I met Gloria at a conference out in Western Massachusetts that was put on by She's Local. It's it's interesting the way things work out, right? Mm-hmm. And how sometimes you meet the people you're supposed to meet because When I went into the networking event, it was like wine and past hors d'oeuvres and I have no problem introducing myself to people. And so I just inserted myself into a group of ladies who were standing up near the bar and I introduced myself and then they continued to talk amongst the three of them. Like I really wasn't there. And I'm like, not the people for me. I'm going to go sit at this table over here. I sat with Miss Gloria Williams and I feel like we never stopped talking the whole time. We didn't. It was a great time. It was a great time. Uh, You're a fascinating human being. The work that you're doing in this world is divine. It's the only word I can think to say it. So let's just jump right in and let everyone meet you. I want to start out by asking you this work that you do now, like I said, is so divine. What brought you to this place that led you to want to do this work? Well, um, as going for guardianship for my granddaughter, when she was a minor, she was two years old. Um, I did my own work. My daughter, she uh, didn't want to be a mom, I guess, or she didn't feel she could be that mom. And I, she said, mom, can you take my baby? And I said, oh, I was shocked at first, but I did. And, uh, you know, and then as time went on, I saw that she was not being, coming forth to take her. So I said, you know, I can't do anything. So I needed to go to court to get the legal guardianship. I did my own paperwork. I I didn't have an attorney. I stood up for myself and uh, my daughter took me back and forth to court. She wouldn't show up. But then I explained to the judge, I said, you know, no disrespect to you, Your Honor. I have a full-time job and I need to support myself and my granddaughter. And she told me, she said, Ms. Williams, you will never have to come back to this courtroom. When I make my decision, I will call you on the phone. And she did. I was at work and she granted me guardianship of my granddaughter until she was 18. And from there it was, okay, now I have this little one. What do I do? I was working a full-time job, still on the same job. Uh, So I'm like, okay, she needs care. And at that time, my husband was alive. So he watched. I said, you know what? You watch her while I go to work. And I'm in the midst of me working. I'm going to be making some phone calls because we need to put her in some type of daycare or something because I didn't want her to be home all the time. So we did. And um, I met this lady. I I don't remember her name, but I do have the paperwork. And um, she said to me, she said, Miss Williams, 
As long as you're a grandmother and you have this guardianship, your child care is free. And I was like, what? She said, let no one tell you that you have to pay for child care. So my granddaughter had child care free up until she was 15. Gosh. And um, I was blessed. I was truly blessed to meet this young lady because she didn't have to tell me that. Because once you get the children from the courts, they don't they give you no resources. You're on your own and you have to figure this thing out. So at that time, I, you know, I got the guardianship and I put her in child care and she, she went to the um, YMCA and it was a joy because I still didn't have to miss work. And she got there, they had before and after school care. So she was there before seven and I picked her up, you know, sometime I pick her up early and sometime I let her stay and be with friends. And then sometime I took advantage of it because during that time you get a membership to the gym. So that, that worked out. It worked out for me. And, you know, and we, you know, so after that, and then, you know, when she started actual schooling, that, that was her before school. So I could drop her off. The bus would take her to school. The bus would pick her up from school and bring her back to the Y. So I was securing my job and I was securing knowing that my granddaughter had a safe place. And it was a family place because I met so many wonderful people. And so, and was able to really tell my story about how I got my granddaughter. So, um, so how I got to being doing grandparents in charges, um, I realized that there was no resources out there. And I thought I was the only grandparent going through it until you start talking about your story. So, and that's what made me open my business and, you know, try to give all everything that I've learned, you know, just by going through my own experience to other grandparents that is going through the same thing and not just grandparents. Now it's great grandparents. So, and they have no clue. They have no clue of what's, what's out there. So I, um, I took it upon myself. I used to, my oldest daughter, before she got into her business, I said, you know what? I need to go away. I need to think. And I will go to Washington, D.C., get me a hotel, at my laptop, reading books. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this. And then I got nervous. And my daughter, she was my big encourager. She was my big, she said, Ma, you can do this. She said, you're the first to do this. So you can do it. Don't let nobody else take this away from you. And that's how I started. I created my own website, my first website. And I just, it, I'm like, this wasn't for me. So then my daughter used to go to um, a BNI group, BNI group. And she said, Mom, this lady, she know how to do websites. I said, really? I said, okay. So that's when she introduced me to her and she came to my home and we just hit it off and she's still my, my web designer to this day she it's a <laughs> you know I just wanted to be unique and I wanted to be the colors that are vibrant which is like a reddish orange and it was a vibrant color for me because at that time it was it was in the fall and I love that color so that is my brand and um that's how I got started because I want to give back and I'm still giving back to this day. Gloria, you truly are just such a, such a light in the world. And you know, your website, first of all, is beautiful. And I want to, I don't know how much you know about energy work or any of that, but I am an energy healer. I'm a Reiki master mm -hmm. and the orangish red color that you use on your website is your mm -hmm. sacral chakra. And that's your energy center of creativity. And so, and your confidence and your personal power. And so all of that energy, whether you realize it or not, is coming through your website when people just log on before they even talk to you. Okay. So all of the energy before anybody even hears your beautiful voice and hears your beautiful story, they're getting the energy of the sacral chakra, the personal power, the creativity is coming toward them already. And from what I already know about you and our previous conversations, that's really who you are. You're all about standing in your personal power and, you know, what's my next step, right? Mm -hmm. that's and, true 
let's I feel make like that's how you've navigated this whole thing. You were mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to take guardianship. What's my next step? And you yes. figured it out. And then after you yeah. figured that one out, you were like, okay, now what's my next step? And there's so much mm -hmm. wisdom in that, Gloria. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And I thank you. <laughs> I yeah. do. Because it's a, it's a, it's, I could write a whole book about what transpired from the age of two until now, yeah. because it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, when she started school, the, you know, I picked up on something from her and I said, mm -mm, something's not right. So I wrote to the school. I said, I think my granddaughter has a learning disability. They try to dismiss it, but I wouldn't let them. I said, who gives a kid a F for math in first grade? No, she was in kindergarten. I said, who gives a kid that? And I said, nah. I said, you're going to test her and you're going to do what you're supposed to do. And they fought me. I fought 11 years to get her her IEP. I would not give up. And then there was I was doing a whole lot of research. I'm like, she has something. And I knew it was a learning disability because the way that I um, would talk to her or read stuff to her. So what I had to do with her was I had to read first to her, then get the question ask her the question, then go back and read it again to her and then help her to underline what was the important parts of it. But then I said, it's still something. It just kept bugging me and then bugged me. So I said, you know what? I did a little research. So then I found Boston's Children's Hospital and they had this test on there for children with dyslexia. So I, I said, take this test. We gonna find out what's going on here. So I had her take the test. I had her take the test and sure enough, it came up. So then I, you know, reached out to Boston children. And at that time she was in a charter school when she, when it really got going. And I said, nah. And then with the charter schools, you know, I said, to her, I said, do you take children with IEPs? Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. But my heart told me different. And I never go against my intuition, never, because I know what I know. And I said, hmm, I said, I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. Sure enough, I put her there. There was no interventions. There was just a teacher pulling her out of a class. So I said, you know what? This is my opportunity to do what I need to do for her. So what I did was I wrote to Boston's Children's Hospital and I said, I think my granddaughter has a learning disability. And I think she has some other things going on, too. But I don't want to say, I just want to see if it comes out. So sure enough, I made the school pay twice. Made the school pay twice to take her to Boston's children. And then when I took her to a doctor in Northampton, I'll never forget her. Her name was um, Dr. Katerina Chinchilli. And uh, so she said, you're my tiger. And I said, huh? She said, you're my tiger because you don't give up. I said, no, not when it comes to my grandbabies. And um, no, I'm not going to give up. So she even came to the IEP meeting and told the school she needed an IEP. They dismissed it. I said, okay, they want to keep playing. So we're going to keep spending their money. And I did. And then when I went to, they took her for testing at the Boston Children's Hospital. The doctor there, she told me, she said, grandma, you are on point. She said, you have not missed a beat. She said, she, she has a learner. And that's what took it to get her an IEP. 11 years of fighting where she got what she needed. And then she said to me, she said, Grandma, you know what? I don't want to go to that school anymore. I said, you don't have to, baby. I said, but we got to find out where you can go to that someone is going to follow through and where I could be that pit bull I need to be because so, so, so that you get your education. And sure enough, she had a therapist that, you know, I said, I don't want my granddaughter in just any school because I believe in education. I believe in children learning what they need to learn. So she she said, you know what? Where does she want to go? I said, I don't know. But I know she loves to draw. She loves to sing and she loves to dance. So she said, well, I got the perfect school. I said, OK, well, we'll see. So we did take her to that school and um, she got into the school. I met with the, the young lady that was of the IEP and we sat down and talked. And I said, you might have your way of doing things, but I'm a grandmother that have a way of doing my things. And we're going to go by my way because your way is not going to satisfy me because, you know, 
I wanted daily reports, weekly reports. I want everything. And they did it. And she was an honor student. She never missed school because I don't, you know, if I don't miss work, what you need to miss school for? So she, uh, she got what she needed and she was an honor student. She left ROTC as a second lieutenant. So she, she's an amazing kid. She's an, an amazing kid. She's very amazing, amazing kid. kid. So I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. She's an amazing kid, grandma, but she could have been overlooked. And you said, no, yes. I'm advocating mm -hmm. for this child mm -hmm. because she's her own kind of brilliant. Right. And that's yes. what's so frustrating is that if these kids don't fit into this box of standardized testing, mm -hmm. then there's something mm -hmm. wrong with them. And we're not going to focus on yep. them. We're going to focus on the kids who fit. Right. Exactly. Her zone of genius lay in her creativity and in her artistic mm -hmm. abilities. But mm -hmm. where she was going to school, they weren't honoring that. They weren't seeing her. So A, kudos to you for being a dog with a bone and saying, no, 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 you're not going to overlook my grandbaby. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. taking her where she could flourish and she could shine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. It was a lot of work. But yep. I did it. <laughs> yep. Here's you know? the thing, Gloria, I want to point out, first of all, parenting is hard, right? It's oh, difficult. Cool. You have to get up every day and do the thing, whether you want to do the thing or not that day, you're doing the thing because people are counting mm -hmm. on you. And that's when you're young and you have more energy. So to be a grandparent, raising your grandbaby from the age of two years old mm -hmm. on up. A, how did you find the energy to do that? And B, what's the thing inside of you that kept you going? Well, what kept me going? Well, what, what gave me the energy first? I was 42 years old when I had my second grandchild. So right there, I had energy. I had the energy. I, you know, I wasn't a grandparent that I'm a family woman. I'm very family oriented. I will not shirk my responsibility, give it to somebody else. I don't care how hard it gets. I'm not a quitter. I'm going to fight to the end. And that's what I taught my children. They always said to me, Ma, you was in the military. I said, no, I'm not in the military. But I do have, you know, perfectionists in me that I would, I would portray onto my children because I wanted them to understand I don't want you to be a, a stat in society. I want you to be your own person. So that's what kept me going. And I couldn't disappoint my granddaughter. That was the biggest thing because she was already disappointed when she came into the world. Number one, my granddaughter came into the world deceased. Hmm. So I saw God put life in her body. I was there when she was born. So she was purple and all that. But God and I went into the bathroom and sent me a prayer. I said, God, this baby got to live. And I heard her scream. And I said, you know what? Now is my time that I cannot disappoint her when I took her because she already, you know, no, the father wasn't there. My daughter wasn't there. And she only had me. So I was her, I was her source to keep her going. It was rough. Did I get angry? Yes. Yes, I did. Because at that point of my life, I said, my last kid just graduated and I'm ready to, you know, live my life because I was a young mom and I had raised three kids and I had to do what I needed to do to take care of my, my children. And that's what I didn't want to disappoint my granddaughter, you know, let her know, Hey, no matter how hard it get, we can do this. And that's what gave me my energy, knowing that I had a responsibility to her and knowing that I saw things that other people didn't see that probably would have hindered her growing up. But I was there to just watch everything and didn't miss a beat. Didn't miss a beat. And you know so, what? I, yeah. You know what I hear in all of that? Everything you just said is she was answered prayer for you and whether she knew it or not, you were an answered prayer for her. Because that's that you're right. Because that's what I said to God. I said, what am I supposed to do with myself now? My kids are grown. You know, I'm like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed to have been in her life and, you know, still in her life, even though she chose to 
say, hey, grandma, I need my space because I did. I was that strict grandmother. You were not going to friend's house. They're not coming here. And she told me, grandma, I didn't have a teenage life. I said, what? I said, okay. I, you know, I'm not going to argue with her because I know who I am and what I did. So, you know, I wanted to protect her. And that's what I did. Made sure she was protected and got her education, you yeah. know? And, and your second question gift. was such a gift. And what was your um, second question? My second question, you really already answered it was what kept you going? And, you know, you said it yourself, like it was just your desire. Mm -hmm. She was seen and heard and taken care of and mm -hmm. able to become everything that mm -hmm. she was capable of becoming. And here's the thing, Gloria, whether you're the parent or you're the grandparent or the great grandparent. They're mm -hmm. going to go through this period of their life where they think that they're yeah. independent and they know all the answers and all of that. I went through it. I'm certain you went through it. And then I came back around and was like, huh, I remember my dad mm -hmm. saying that. Yeah, he was right about that. Yeah. yeah. I remember my mom said that, but I didn't want to hear it then, but she was so mm -hmm. right. And she'll come mm -hmm. back around and know those things too. Because like I say, I... I'm that person. What do you know at 18? You don't even know who you are at 18. Right. And I'm, that I'm, that, I'm that person. Exactly. And that's what I said. I keep saying this to myself and I, I'm, I'm going to figure it out. And I keep saying, I am going to pass me a bill that these children stay with their parents until they're 22. Because at 18, they don't know anything. 19, they still don't know anything. 20, they just feeling their way through. 21, they like, oh, I got to get a job. I got to do something. And 22, they get it. it. A light bulb will go on, or maybe it won't, but I think 22 is the age for these children because you, you see so many of our children homeless. For what reason? So that's a big factor for me. I think society needs to give us more time with our children, even though we get them to their 18, but it needs to go beyond that 18 because they're just fierce. They're just sowing their oats. They ain't trying to, yep. okay, well, well, what did I miss out on? Let me go out here and do this. They ain't thinking about no job and no college. They're not. They'll go to college. What they doing? There you go. So, I, it's so I, true. I just, I just feel that society needs to change that age. If they can't, Doing, they can't become an adult until they're 18. They can't drink till they're 21. So why not give us another year to make it, you know, make sure that they see what they want to see and, and feel what they need to feel. And I just feel we push our children out there. And my goal was to never let her go, but I guess she showed me who was boss. She has other feelings. <laughs> but she... <laughs> Gloria. Yes. She, yes. So I had to because she knows that you've got her back. Right. And she knows mm -hmm. that you're oh, her yes. safety net and not mm -hmm. all kids have that. And so she's very blessed whether she realizes yeah. it or not. And, you know, the yeah. example that you've set of taking your PhD in life, everything that you've been through and you've now come full circle and you have created this business, Grandparents in Charge, for other people who are now yes. going through similar things that you've gone through. Mm -hmm. yeah. What kinds of things have you learned along the way that now you either, I know that you are on boards and you offer workshops and things. So what kind of things are you now shining the light for other people through what you've learned? Well, what I have done is um, I re try to remain positive with them because a lot of grandparents, they feel negative. Oh, I am not going to get my grandkid, all this. And I say, you know what? Here's what I do. And I tell them what I do. I said, I journal out every day. The first thing I do, I put God first. No matter what I'm going through, he has to come first because you can't put him at the tail end and say, okay, I did it. Now what you going to do? No, he already know what we need. We have to put him first. Just put it in that journal. Hey, just, just, just talk to him. Like you talking to me. And they look at me like, for real. I said, if you got a curse, curse, God understands. And it's going to help you get stronger 
That's my, it, it came in my third book, Empowering Grandparents. And that's where you get stronger because in the beginning, you're trying to feel your way. You're trying to figure it out. At some point, you're going to feel that energy. It's like, you know what? This kid is depending on me and I have to just do it. And I tell them to journal out, stay positive. Put your music on in your house. Take your grandkids out and take pictures. Because you know what? If you don't take those memories, they're going to come back at you. Oh, what did we do? Well, you didn't do nothing with me. But if you show those pictures to them, they're going to be like, oh, that's me? Look at you now, you know? And I always try to encourage them. Make those memories. Because guess what? If you don't, you're never going to have them. And that's what I did with my granddaughter. She wanted to go, oh, grandma. I said, come on, are you be going to travel? We did a lot of traveling and they wonder, are you rich? I said, no, I'm not rich. I just know how to do certain things because, you know, we're not rich. But guess what? They have programs out there to put you on a budget. Budget your money. Take those kids somewhere. They don't need to be just seeing Springfield or or wherever they live. They need to see something outside of it. I took my grandkids on a cruise. They love it. Where are we going again, Grandma? I looked at them. I said, ooh. But you know what? I did it. I took them to Puerto Rico, and we just walked. You have to make those memories, and that's what kept me going, and that's what I do with my, my grandparents. I just say, don't be afraid. Yes. Stop worrying about your kid because they grown, but these babies need somebody. They need somebody when they have that nightmare at night that you're there. You're not waking up, oh, what you crying for now? No, they need that love. They need that hug. They need that support to say, you know what? Somebody's there for me when they felt alone because they have emotions just like us, just like us. Because here's my thing. We as adults can show emotions, but we have to be responsible enough to let the children show their emotions too. Because we don't know what they're feeling. We don't know what they went through before we got them. So you have to just step back, let them have their moments, but also have it in a disciplinary way where they understand that they cannot disrespect you. Because that's what's happening. Oh, well, that, no, no, you can't go. Oh, they didn't have this. They didn't have that. You need to put some type of disciplinary. There. My granddaughter, when she want to act up, I'm some, you know what? I'm going to use your hand for penmanship. We're going to learn how to write. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm going to write. You're going to write a hundred times. You're going to write a thousand times. Grandma, uh-uh. Because you know what? If I don't put you straight, you're going to be out there doing something else. So penmanship, she taught herself how to cursive write. Which they don't teach no more. But I right. sit down and write. Yeah. I said, do a thousand times. And exactly what you did for her is what you're now pulling forward and doing for other people. You're saying, I've been through this. Yeah. I know how to do this. Let me help mm -hmm. you. Right. And mm -hmm. so you've come full circle yes. in that now you're making these opportunities and this guidance available for other grandparents. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to struggle and try to figure it out on their own. And that mm -hmm. is just beautiful. I feel like that's the way life mm -hmm. is supposed to be. Let's shine our light. Because yelling and screaming until... is not going to get nothing. Right. And yeah. let's shine our light until yeah. the other true. person is able yeah. to shine their own light, right? And that's what you do is you that's shine right. your light for other people. Yeah. Yes. Because if I, they see you do it, they can do it. How does she say? She's working a full-time job. She got a business. She's writing books. She's this. She's that. And they people come to me like, when do you find time to travel? Oh, you better believe I get my traveling in. Yeah. You know, because I love to travel. I love to see different things and I love to meet people. I love people. And one thing about me, I don't even have to say anything to people. They just open right up, tell me their whole life. And I just look, I'm like, why me? And that's the conversation that I was having this this weekend with God. I'm like, because I, I went to go sign up to go back to school, go back to college to do a nine month program for human services. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to do this. And every time I say, I don't want to do it, God puts somebody in my path. 
And I'm like, okay, God, I got it. I got it. I'm going to do it. And uh, so I reached out to a young lady that was mentoring my granddaughter when my granddaughter wanted to go to college. And I said to her, and she's a Christian woman. And I said to her, I said, you're my mentor. I said, God it gave me an assignment and I have to do it. You can't give up. And I just need that support. And she emailed me back. You got it. What do you need? So we're going to set up a meeting so I can get the ball rolling. I started it, but then I'm like, well, do I really want to do this? But I need to, I know I need to do it because not only do he send me grandparents, but on my job, we took in some uh, summer interns and I could tell this young lady had a problem, but she, she just was really shy and quiet. So then one day she came and talked to me and she said, Miss Gloria. I said, yes. And um, she said, um, she said, you know, I need to talk to somebody. I said, well, what's the problem? So she told me about her two nieces that they're not doing great things. And I said, well, listen, here's my business card. If you ever want to talk, I'm here for you and I will be there for you. And so the movie, I don't know if you saw it yet. Sound of Hope came out. Okay, so I went to see it twice already. I saw it 4th of July and I saw it Saturday. Beautiful movie. It's about a community, a church, 22, pe 22 families adopted 77 children. And I told her, take your nieces to see this movie because then they're going to see if they don't stop doing what they're doing, how society is going to teach them how to act. I said, they can do it freely or they can be under some rules. So it was, you have to see this movie. It is beautiful, a beautiful movie. And the reason why I went a second time, because the first time it was my healing. And the second time I went to see it is because I needed to really hear that God need, I need to do this course. And it's only nine months with some internship. And I said, okay. And that's why I went back the second time. And it's a beautiful movie. And I think all grandparents should see it with their grandchildren and let them know that they're loved because these children came from some really horrible backgrounds. And, you know, and my passion is always children. And, you know, I, you know, my kids, I love my kids, even though they're grown. But I'm still there when they need me. I'm always going to be there because guess what? They're mine. And I know nobody can take them away from me because I did my job, you know? Yeah. So, and, it's, and that's the thing I say to grandparents. Love your grandkids. You know what? You raise your kids. You did the best that you can. And you did the best that you know how. Children don't come with books. Children don't come with instructions. You have to just... What what your parents did with you, you have to do with your kids a different way because it's always a different generation. And you can't go back. I can't go back into the 60s because that's when I was born the way my parents raised us. You have to keep it up. You have to keep up with the generation because time is changing. And, you know, if you don't change with the time, guess what? What are you going to teach your grandchildren? That's you know, right. I have a lot of grandparents tell me, oh, I don't know nothing about the computers. I say, yes, you do. They got so many free classes out here. You can go to college for free. They have this free community room. You can go for free. I say, I have a friend that's 70 years old teaching computers. So don't tell me you can't learn. So I force them. I push them because you know what? You might want to take a picture with your phone and you don't know how to do it or you can't get that picture. I'm going to see this picture. How are you going to do anything if you don't go out there and learn something? So I forced them to do it. You know, don't take the word can't out of your vocabulary Yeah. and put, I'm going to do it. That's it. You have to have that power in you and that drive in you just to keep moving and never sit still. Because you know what? I keep saying, oh, I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire. I keep looking. I said, mm. I ain't retiring because that's not me. You know, I figured, you know what? That's my drive to get up every morning and go to work and empower these customers and let the customers know. So I'm like, if I can empower the customers, I can empower the grandparents because I have customers that call less grandparents. I had one lady tell me, you know, Miss Gloria, your voice just soothed me. I said, okay. And she told me she was raising, uh-huh. 
I was going to, sorry, I didn't realize, I thought that you were finished that thought, but that's who you are. You're a soother. You're an empowerer. You're an inspirer, right? And so mm -hmm. that's what we need in this world is for someone to say, not making excuses. Yes, you mm -hmm. can. And mm -hmm. let me show you how to do it. And that's what is so yes. remarkable remarkable about you, Gloria, is that you are all of that in this one package of beautiful, inspiring energy. And so I know that we're coming near to the end of our time together, but what are the names of your four books so that people can look on Amazon for them? The first one I wrote was Grandparents, Raising Grandchildren, Let's Build Stronger Families. The second one was a book that I wrote where grandchildren can interview their grandparents to see what their life was like because of COVID. A lot of grandparents passed on, so a lot of grandchildren may not get that opportunity, but they can take it to their family members and, um, you know, help them to find out what their family was like. And my third book was um, a 13 lesson to empower grandparents, to go to your governors, go to your senators, go to these people and let them know, hey, I'm a grandparent, I need help. And that was to let them know that you're not alone in this because some of those senators and governors and people have grandkids, but they're not telling you their story because they have this image to keep up. I don't have an image to keep up. My image is to let you know I am authentic. I am real. And I don't mind telling my story to let you know that it's okay to do this. And my last book I wrote is uh, Grandparents Raising Grandchildren in This Human Sex Trafficking Society for today, because my granddaughter almost got sex trafficked. And that book was dedicated to her. And it came out this year, February. And um, it was a story to tell, but I just thank God that I had that discerning spirit, that intuition, and knew how to ask God for what I wanted. Because I said, you know what? It's no way. And that anniversary for my granddaughter is coming up on August 3rd. And that's when she almost, we almost didn't see her again. But you know what? I just thank God that he gave me the knowledge and the know-how, the talent just to say, it's okay. No matter what you're going through, it's okay. It's okay. And my favorite scripture in the Bible is Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. That's God telling you, no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, you're going to always come back and do it the same way I told you. I love it. And you know what is so beautiful about that is no matter if you're Christian or you're any other religion or have any other mm -hmm. belief system, what's important is that you have a belief system, right? You have yes. a rock. Yes. You have that yeah. guiding light that brings mm -hmm. you back to center and, you know, that North Star that you can follow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I believe that through all of this, your faith is the thing that, you know, your faith, and that guided intuition that kept bringing you back. Nope, mm -hmm. you can do this. Here's the next breadcrumb mm -hmm. to follow. Yes. Nope, back to center. Here's mm -hmm. your next breadcrumb to follow. And mm -hmm. Gloria, you are a servant in this world. Thank you. You are a servant and you do it so beautifully and masterfully. Thank and you. so- you're Thank so you. relatable. Your stories, I just feel like I would be in a corner rocking. <laughs> and here you are, like, not only have you done the thing, but you wrote a book about it. And so I just mm -hmm. encourage all grandparents who are facing the responsibility, the honor, all of the things of raising their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I just encourage them yes. to check you out. And so where can people find you? You can call me um, after three. You can reach me at 413-788-0234. Or you can go to my website, grandparents, the letter N charge.com. You can find my books there as well. And you can also email me at grandparents3551 at aol.com. 
I may not get to you within that 72 hours, but I will get to you. <laughs> Girl, can I just say and, how much you know, I it's just because I can I just say how much I love that you still have an AOL? It's amazing. Well, your the link to your website is in show notes already. And so all anyone has to do is just click on that link and they can find their way to you, Miss Gloria Williams, and they can allow themselves to bask in the light that is your generosity. I never got to wrap up my conversation with Gloria due to a tech issue she was having, but it didn't matter. Her words, her energy, and the positive difference that she's making in the world was very clearly communicated. Gloria continues to lean into her life's PhD to uplift and bless other people. She's helping to raise the vibration of the collective one soul at a time. She's a pretty amazing human being. So inspiring. You can learn more about Gloria, how she can support you on your journey, and how to get a copy of her books at www.grandparentsincharge.com or by clicking the link in show notes. If you're ready to take your podcasting and video content to the next level, join me and countless other creators who trust in Riverside.fm. Visit Riverside today using the link in show notes and start creating content that truly shines. Remember, the universe is abundant and success is your birthright. Let's align, elevate, and thrive together, one conversation at a time. Good night. Thank you for being in our Women Finding Clarity community. If you're enjoying this podcast, please consider leaving us a five-star rating and review on your favorite listening platform and share it with someone you know so they can find clarity from the conversation as well. Remember, the universe is abundant and success is your birthright. Let's align, elevate, and thrive together one conversation at a time. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.